On March 18, 1915, right in the middle of World War I, Josie was born in San Marco, Locatola, a small town in Foggia, Italy. She was not expected to survive as she was unhealthy at birth, but she did, and we're very thankful for it. She remembers those early years as happy ones. Well, I liked it because that's where I was born, San Marco, Locatola. And that's it. So, but, uh, we went to school. If we had a nice teacher, the fifth grade, and they took us and used to say to us, "Come on, if you do the the work fast, I take you for for a walk." So he used to be nice, and we took a picture with him. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, we took, took his picture. We were all around him. Yeah. And we ha we have fun. Now, he was a very nice teacher. I had a, all, a, all a nice teacher, but uh, he was really nice. When Josephine, also known as Pimpernel, was five, her father set out to make his fortune in America, leaving his family far behind. It would be 12 years before she saw him again. Well, well, we used to do crochet. My mother used to send the, uh, to the nun. And so, and, and she used to teach us all to do the things, you know, with the little girl who was supposed to do. Yeah, she was, uh, she was, uh, she turned to be a nun the first uh, but then uh, she didn't come out with the nun. 1932, when Josie was 17, she and her sister Nina oh, my sister. sailed across the Atlantic to meet their father. It was not an easy time. I was so sick. My, my sister, she was dancing on the top of the boat, on a boat there. And, and me, I was sick like a dog. <laughs> and that's it, yeah. When I came here, I met my father, and I didn't know my father at all. And that, that was that, yeah. Eventually, her mother and brother had joined the family, initially settling in Canada, and eventually landing in the United States. By this time, Josie had met Angelo, the man who would become her husband. They had the telephone, and so my mother, oh, she didn't know how to read and write and, and answer the phone. And when I used to stay there in their house, she used to say, answer, answer the phone, <laughs> because she didn't know how to answer. And then that day, after when I met Daddy, and that, and that was that. Josie and Angelo married on June 2nd, 1937, and settled into their first home in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, that was off Meriden Road, the, li the little house, yeah. It, it was nice. And so, the, you know, Angelo, we were rather the, the, we knew, the, I knew him. So, he says, and and Angelo says, well, because a man came in, in the little house, and, and then Angelo says, wait, 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 where are you going? He says, I came to see Lucy. That was, that used to see the lady, but <laughs> he says, Lucy doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> And so you went right over to get out with that. And that's it. Soon there were three children. Marianne in 1940, Elaine in 1944, and Billy in 1957. By this time, they were living in Hamden and had a lovely cottage on the lake in Guilford. Uh, the lake was nice. You know, but it, it's uh, because I, had, I have some of the kids used to sit Elaine. Elaine, 
ready? Are we recording? Are we in focus? Out of focus? Can I go? What's the secret to a long life? Oh, the long life? Yeah, what's the secret? What's the secret? I don't have no secret. He's driving me. Could you please move? I'm not going to ask again. Thank you. And then, and then just come on. Could you please move? I'm not going to ask again. Could you please move? I'm not going to ask again. Could you please move? I'm not going to ask again. Could you please move? I'm not going to ask again. Happy birthday, Graham. I love you. Happy birthday, Graham. I love you. Happy 100th birthday, Graham. Happy 100th birthday. I do barber check my nose here. Hey. Okay.